No matter what your views on the book of Boba Fett, I think we can all agree the scene where Mando takes his new N1 starfighter out for a spin through Beggar's Canyon just has to be captured as a diorama. I've always wanted to design an entire diorama in 3D and then print it. Now, it's not going to be a massive diorama because I want to print it on my resin printer. And I have a brand new one from Nova 3D, a whale too. So this was the perfect opportunity to put it through its paces. So a large number of cubes and quite a lot of sculpting of rock later, I had a slice of Beggar's Canyon. Then all I had to do was print it out on my new whale too. Now, that actually sounds really easy, doesn't it? Yep, done. STLs are available for purchase, end of video. Well, not really. There's a little bit more to the story and I'm going to take you through it. Now this is a modelling channel, so I'm not really going to run you through the design process. There are people who know far more about Blender than I do who will be able to tell you how to do this far better than I did. But the first decision in every project, do I want to do it in filament or do I want to do it in resin? No, actually the filaments came out really nice. It's a 0.1 layer height, looks great, but that piece took hours, it took about eight hours. The piece from resin on my new printer, it's a monochrome screen, it took four hours. The next piece that I wanted to print, uh, one of the bigger pieces, was going to be 20 hours on the filament. So the resin turned out to be much quicker and it is half the layer height, so it does have better detail. Once I'd cleaned and prepped them, all I had to do was sand off any supports that were still in place. Sometimes the nubs got left behind. I, it was at this point that I hit the floor in all of these pieces. Do you ever get to a point in a project where you know you just have to reprint anyway? I'm doing these for sale, so I needed to do a reprint. I spent a day sanding them, wet sanding them, shaving them, because my buildings didn't quite come together properly. There were a few areas they just didn't quite mesh, and I needed these to be perfect. That's just who I am. And this one was especially bad. I had a couple of print errors, so, I just decided to combine everything, reprint it, and the beauty of my new Whale 2 by Nova 3D. It's a resin printer, it's monochrome screen. It has really short build times. It doesn't take long to print this. So even this, which is one of my largest pieces, is only six or seven hours on that printer. And because of that, you know, reprinting all of these in the middle of a project, normally I'd have just gone, oh, I can't do that, I haven't got the time. But with this Whale 2, not only is it great quality and I'm doing it at 50 microns, it's also really easy to just bang out prototype and then print again. So it was out with the old prints and in with the new ones and these ones fitted together perfectly. They just needed a quick nub clean up from some supports and they were good to go. These are designed just to clip together with open lock clips, they're a standard for terrain. Now, no matter how well you design things, straight lines through scenery often show. I filled these with Tamiya epoxy putty and just smoothed it out around the edges. I kind of feathered it so it wouldn't need sanding because you, you can't sand a modelled base like this. I am, and I know in my head, I'm actually going to put a layer of targa out over this just because I like the finish better than a painted finish. If you can paint perfectly, you just need to fill and get on with it. Gave it a day to dry and sanded off any areas. You can't do too much because you'll take the detail out of the print, but you can knock off any rough spots. Then after a quick wash to get rid of any dust, it was back to the airbrush booth to add some brown primer. Brown primer can be the base coat, so it's doing double duty here. Next up, I added orangey browns, getting lighter and lighter in colour. I think with hindsight, I could have gone a bit lighter, but I didn't want to overdo it. That got followed up with some yellow on the base. It's got a much lighter colour, sort of a sand, I guess, down there. I used Vallejo white paint, just hand painted on, to pick out all of the buildings in white. It did take a couple of coats to get them truly white. Now, if the paints look a little shiny, it's because they're gloss. So time to add quite a healthy coat of dull coat. It's just a matte varnish in a can to try and tone it all down and I'm about to put pigments on and they need something to stick to and they won't stick to gloss paint. 
I did my first step of picking out details on the white buildings with a MIG neutral wash. This is MIG Productions, I've had it for donkey's years. It looks a bit orangey coloured if you don't shake it that well, which was perfect for here. I'm not a huge fan of painted finishes for rock work. They look a little lacking in depth. So I did pigments next. And these are perfect because they have a chalky colour. The downside is if you were to pick it up and touch it, you would get pigments all over you unless you seal them. And when you seal them, they go back to looking very much like paints. But nonetheless, I wasn't totally happy with the colourway on this. I wanted it to be a bit more orange. So this is a rust coloured pigment and then a yellow ochre pigment. And I mixed them together, just created loads and loads of variation all over the rock surface. At this point, I ran out of dull coat to seal it. First coat, really, really splodgy, bitty, splattery. Second can, even worse, even more splattery and not very good. And it just sprayed one of those horrible streams of neat dull coat everywhere. So I got out my plastic coat craft sealer, it's a matte. I just don't find it as matte as dull coat. And I literally soaked this in it to try and seal all of those pigments in. They're not the final coat, don't worry. I found another can of dull coat at the back of a cupboard and I sprayed that all over it and it went a lot more matte this time. Reminds me, I still haven't bought any replacements. And notice I'm wearing a mask, this stuff stinks. Now, despite the base having a great texture that I'd already modelled in, I wanted to just add a little bit of, this is brown ballast, round the edges to smooth the transition from the rocks to the sandier areas. And I'd been looking at the photo since I finished the print. If I'd had a terracotta colour, I'd have used that, but I didn't, I had brown, but it's fine. We're gonna cover it in a minute. And here comes a bit of a snag. Now, dull coat, great matte spray. But all of the scenery materials I put on, I use an isopropyl alcohol and water mix to let the glue spread. You've seen me do it in almost every single video. If you put isopropyl alcohol onto dull coat, it goes a white, almost like a salt encrusted texture. It's brilliant for marine areas. I've used it well. But sadly, for something like this, it's just not ideal. So I was just going with neat glue instead of putting on isopropyl alcohol and water first. Oops, forgot to brush the top of those buildings off. That's not really a problem on ballast because it's quite coarse and it's on here quite thinly. But when I get to this stage, which is tile grout, it, yeah, it causes issues. Now tile grout's my favorite product for doing bases. It's great for a sandy texture in these scales. And this is just a beige tile grout. But my glue, which I didn't say, it's actually about a sixth map Mod Podge and five sixth water. I use matte Mod Podge because sometimes PVA dries a little bit glossy. If I put that on without isopropyl alcohol, then it just won't flow. It won't flow through the fine powder of the tile grout. But if I spray isopropyl alcohol on to avoid disturbing the tile grout by dripping it on, then I'm gonna get it all over the walls. And another coat of dull coat would probably get rid of it, but it's getting a bit too much dull coat and yeah, whatever. So I decided I would drip on the isopropyl alcohol and water mix and just hope it didn't go too much up the base of the walls, which are gonna get pigmented again in a minute. It did work, but when you drip, you sometimes get little holes, like potholes where the water goes in. On this, it's quite a thin surface. It's not particularly noticeable. So it came out all right in the end, but I ended up with a huge amount of glue on there trying to get it to flow into all this tar grout. And there is some sand in the tar grout, but because I'm putting it on with a brush, it, it's often the finer sand tile grout particles that you're picking up rather than the sort of heavier sand ones. To all with sealing pigments, it makes them look dead. So I went over the highlights with this big thick brush and a paler, I just mixed the beige and the rust color together to get a paler color. And it may look like I'm mixing tar grout and pigments, and I am. Tar grout is effectively very useful as a pigment on large areas like this. It's much cheaper to use a tar grout than it is to use one of those expensive pigments in a small bottle. So I mixed them up, beige and the rust, and I use the brush just to go over all of the big surfaces. Use a smaller brush then to pick out some details. 
I used the same light colour around the bottom. Now I put this on quite thickly because I still felt there were a few gaps at the top between the rocks and the cliff. I had to seal it therefore I just dripped on some isopropyl alcohol and water. Cement is actually part of tar grout so you don't always need to add glue and glue darkens everything and I didn't want this to go much darker than the current colour. And when that was firm but not quite dry I just dusted over some extra dry pigment to get the texture that I wanted back there which is a lot dustier. But No Beggars Canyon is complete without either a pod racer I'm kind of designing one but haven't quite finished it yet or even better an N1 starfighter with Mando at the helm screaming down the canyon in his test flight. Galactic Armoury had just brought out an STL file for it so I downloaded that, I cured it on its supports because I was worried about it warping and whilst I was at it I found some banthers and Tuscan raiders to put on the tops of the cliffs on Thingiverse. I'm going to mount the Starfighter on a bit of wire so I drilled a hole in its base and then it was time to paint. The Starfighter is getting a gloss chrome finish so first of all I primed it and then I sprayed it with a gloss black. I followed that with chrome, hand painted the yellow stripes and then remembered I hadn't masked the two clear areas off the whole point of printing in clear so I sanded those back to the resin and then finished it with a gloss coat. The Bantha and Tuscan Raiders just got a few quick coats of Vallejo colours. A quick dry brush and then I diluted some a darker acrylic paint as a wash and they were done. I drilled a hole in the base and super glued in some brass wire and then super glued Mando's M1 on the top. Finally I glued the Bantha and Tuscan Raiders on the top and I was done. And whilst I roll the final pictures just a chance to say thank you to my patrons and YouTube channel members who support me. If you want to get hold of these STLs then you can buy them on my website, links are all down below and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did consider subscribing or supporting me some way, just watching it is support enough if that's what you want to do. Otherwise see you next time.